Hello, this is Andy Schaefers with Acuity. Today I'm going to discuss a workflow available with wave linking in NX9 that allows us to make quick revisions to our manufacturing projects. In this case, we're going to imagine that our customer has sent us a revised file via IGIS format. We already have the part programmed here, and now we must adapt to the new revision that we've been sent. Before we begin the workflow, let's look through this file and see what work's already been done in the manufacturing and assembly environments. So here in the Operation Navigator, you see I've got a cavity mill. Here's a five-axis toolpath uh, where I'm swerfing the front, then uh, contour area, and then I'm taking out uh, the pockets here using uh, some 2D machining operations. And here I've got a, a sec separate geometry object where I'm drilling some holes and a planar mill using the top edges of the part here. In addition, I've got two vice jaws, which if I look at my uh, assembly constraint navigator, you see that those are uh, mated and then uh, aligned here at the back. The original geometry setup started when I brought the part in uh, using the assembly environment and then I created a linked body of that part. So all of the programming that you just saw and in fact the assembly relationships were done not on the original uh, component that was brought into the assembly but rather through the linked body. Okay let's get started on our new workflow we are going to take our IGIS file and in this case I'll just add it to my original wave demo file so I'll right click here and make this the displayed part and if I look at the part navigator you see that there's just a single body from the first time I did the import of the customers uh, geometry so let's go back to the import tab here And here's my RevB IGIS file. I'll import it to the work part so that they both exist here in the same file. Now that's not necessary. I could have imported into a completely new component, um, but this is the workflow I'm choosing for a video today because it's just a little easier. So now I have two bodies in here. And in fact, I'm going to change the layer of one of those. And I'll just put this on layer 5. At this time then, we will return to our original file. And uh, let's turn layer 5 on in here. Oh, I'm sorry, turn, I'm going to turn the part on. Okay, so now you can see the part and both bodies are in here we see immediately that there are a lot of revisions from the old part. Uh, this new part is stretched out farther, uh, so my vice jaws are in the wrong place. The holes have moved, and uh, maybe more significantly, this hole has gotten much larger to the point where it's actually into the walls of this rectangular pocket that's here. So lots of changes have been made. Let's go to our navigator now and look at that linked body. We'll switch to modeling so that we can get into the linked body. And let's edit. Okay, it's highlighted the body that was previously selected and from which all the uh, machining operations were created. Here I'll deselect that body and select the new body. If I click OK right now, it will do that replacement. And when I look at my uh, workpiece in the Operation Navigator, I'll find that that top level part has in fact been replaced. 
but if I attempt to regenerate the operations, they will mostly all fail. And the reason is that the individual faces that make up the part are not going to remap. In the IGES file, the faces will have different identifiers, uh, as will edges and vertices, and NX will not be able to map those old identifiers to the new ones, uh, causing me to have to redo everything in the manufacturing environment. What we're looking for then is a tool that will allow us to map the old faces to the new ones so that the internal identifiers line up and our manufacturing operations and our assembly work will then carry over to the new part. We invoke this by choosing the replacement assistant. Okay, we're now in the replacement assistant. Uh, the screen's a little crowded. I'll move things over and you'll see that right now I'm just rotating one view at a time, but if I check the box to synchronize the views, uh, then I see both views rotate simultaneously. That's a, that's a nice feature. <clears throat> Our job here is to get all of the faces matched from the old body to the new body so that the internal identifiers can be mapped across. There are several techniques for doing this and uh, the first thing we'll try is just geometric matches. You know, are there any uh, faces that did not move that we can quickly match? And in fact, there were a few. It found uh, 43 new matches. What we need to do here then is uh, accept these because these are, are currently tentative matches. So you'll see the little lightning bolt here. If we like the, the matches it found, we'll accept them. And so all of our matches are now uh, accepted. Uh, let's continue though, because there's a lot of faces that were, were not select, uh, matched yet. And if I say emphasize unmatched objects, it'll help me figure that out. Okay, let's continue. We want to create a new match. So I'll hit the Add New Match button. That makes the field here orange. That tells us that's where the focus is. And I'll select the face up here and here. Hit the uh, middle mouse button, which is a, a nice shortcut. So I'm selecting each match with the middle mouse button as I move across. And let's grab this round up here. Okay, so there's several faces that are now matched up. Let's accept those tentative matches. And let's try another technique. Uh, instead of a geometric, let's try infer from accepted. So that technique allows it to look at the faces that were selected and then perhaps find that there's an edge or a face that also belongs to that set. So in that in this case it found 66 new matches. That's fine. We'll go back and uh, accept those matches. Let's switch back to geometric and we're starting to get a sense of where additional matches need to be made. Uh, remember, when you switch back to geometric again, you do need to hit the add new match button so that you see the orange background here. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to make selections. See, I can uh, make selections in either direction, it doesn't matter. Now we'll switch back to inferred from accepted again. 
and this time it found uh, 71 new matches. So be careful to accept all those tentative matches. And sometimes if you just hit the button again, uh, you can continue to find more inferred matches from the ones that were just accepted. Now I'm starting to see sort of a trend of where it's having trouble. For instance, where this hole was moved, it's just, it just has no idea that uh, that's a match. So that's a situation where I'll need to come over here, hit add new match. and it's also having trouble here. And here the, the hole has changed. It needs some help with that one also. All right, let's try inferred one more time. So it found uh, 10 more matches. Accepting those tentative matches. And I fit it yet again. So there isn't much left, but it looks like it's having trouble here at this corner. So I'll switch back to geometric, add new match. and infer one more time. Here's an alert that says all objects from the old parent are matched and all the matches are accepted. So that means there's really nothing else I can do, which uh, might seem confusing at first because I can obviously see some unmatched faces here. Well, this is a big clue for me as I return to manufacturing because what's happened is that this face has been split into two. So, so have the walls. And what that means is there are new entities created which have no matches. So that's going to tell me that probably I'm going to have to look carefully in manufacturing to make sure that this pocket is now machined out correctly. Since I've got all my matches made, I'm going to click OK. and click OK again and uh, you can see right away that the um, my vice jaws have already updated so it found the newly identified faces and it remapped those assembly constraints to the new positions but if we return to manufacturing which we'll do now we see that everything's out of date. The workpiece is pointed at the new solid, but uh, all of my operations need to be updated. Let's see how this works out for me. And just to review, we're trying to avoid the situation where we would need to go into each operation and remap the geometry. Let's look here at the uh, contour profile. It appears that the face was selected correctly. Let's go look at it.
and it does appear that that face is now remapped and it's uh, generating correctly. Here's our contour area up on top. That looks correct. But here's a mistake. We were looking at this earlier. This face has now been split into two and we will need to come in manually. We see the problem. It's only uh, has this one face. It's machining. We'll add the second face. And that uh, completes that, that pocket. This pocket mapped correctly, uh, as did this. Here we're doing a, a multi-axis move to clean up those tapered walls. This face looks correct. And our holes did, in fact, update correctly, including the, uh, the geometry object here. And finally, uh, our planar mill object updated because it was able to extend those profiles out um, to where it, it met the other side. So it is ignoring the larger diameter. That's something we might want to look at if we wanted that profile to actually go around the, the new hole that's there. Okay, so this uh, I think is a, a much more straightforward um, and more productive workflow than going back into each operation and remapping all the geometry, remapping your assembly constraints. It does take a few minutes there in the uh, when you're updating the link body, but I think it's time well spent. Uh, also, I took many steps to go through that, mainly because I was trying to explain the use of the different uh, options that are available for matching geometry. As you get more experience with that command, you'll learn what it needs to see to make matches, and you can get through that in just uh, two or three steps. Also, most revisions that a customer is going to send you are not as extensive as what we went through today. Usually it's just a few areas, and that first match where it looks for faces that did not move will generally match up most of your model. So you'll be focused on the areas where the actual revision occurred. We hope this was uh, helpful to you today. Please contact Acuity uh, with any support or implementation issues you have with NX. Thank you.